Hello and welcome to part two of the GNU plot tutorial. Today we are going to get to know line styles, how they can make your life easier. We're going to improve our plot from last time, make it a little prettier. And I'm going to end the video on some remarks about the PNG terminal. So first of all, line styles. In the official GNU plot manual, it says a line style is a temporary association of properties, line color, line width, dash type, and point type. It is defined using the command set style line. Once you have defined a line style, you can use it in a plot command to control the appearance of one or more plot elements. So this is exactly what we want to do. Uh, we're going to make the plot from last time look a little better. And as you might remember, we had this design curve from the theoretical model and we had our data points. And I want now to set a line style for both of them. So let's start with the sine wave. I can type set style line, then I type a number, for instance, one. So now I set a new line style that's labeled or associated with the number one. And I can now specify things like color and point type and so on. So we might set the line color uh, last time we had this uh, really bright red. Today we're going for something that's a little easier in the eyes. So I can go RGB, quotation marks, hashtag. And now I can type a hex code of some color. So I can, for instance, go 8B0000. And that should be a dark red. And I go line width 2. And that concludes my line style number 1. I go set style line once more, set style line two. Let's define a new line style with line color zero with point type seven. And PS means point size. Didn't use this last time, but now I want to make my points a little smaller. So relative to the default option, I want my point size to be 0 0.9. So now we define these line styles. If you ever forget them, you can just type show style line and it shows the user defined line styles. So we see number one is line color RGB and it automatically identified this as dark red. Line width two and all these are just the, the default options. And line style two is line color zero, point size point nine, point type seven and the default options. And now we can um, plot our graph from last time using these line styles. So I type P for plot, sine of X, line style one, and title theory again. And then I type my data file. I can just write data and then use the tab keys uh, to scroll through all data files in my working directory that start with data. So two in this case, I can scroll through them and select the appropriate one and save a little typing work. Uh, we're going to use this using command again to get the error bars uh, scaled by a factor of 1000 as we did last time. And of course use line style number two, which is why we introduced the line style. And I set the title to measurement and I have to type with error bars or WE short. And this brings up this graph. As we see, we got the dark red color that we specified for the graph. And we got the point style and point size that we specified for the data points. Next thing I want to do is I want to move the, the legend, the key that's up here around a little bit, say to the bottom left, for example. I First, I need to make some room for that. So I'm going to set my Y range from minus two to two real quick. That should free up some space, yep. And I just go set key bottom left and I can type box so it draws a nice little box around the key. Let's replot and we see the keys at the bottom left and there's a box drawn around it. What's not so nice is that the M from measurement is actually touching the border of the box and we can get around that by set key width one 
and it just increases the, the scale, the width of this box and makes it so the M doesn't touch the border of the box anymore. Now the legend is still a little small for my liking. I want to increase the font size. I can type set key font and whenever you specify the font for something it goes like this. You have quotation marks, then you can have a font type, so Arial for instance, comma and the font size, quotation marks. If you just want to change the font size and not actually the font type, you can leave that argument blank and just type comma 14 and it will replot with the same font type but increase the font size to 14. So as you can see it's much larger now, which is exactly what I wanted. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the grid. As you see now these uh, dashed lines here appeared that are there to uh, connect. These little lines are called the ticks, these are the x ticks. These are the y ticks along the y axis and the grid just extends these little ticks throughout the graph and it's there to guide the eye and I think it's it's really nice. Now let's talk about borders a little bit. If I just bring up the graph real quick you can see that there's a top border here and the right border that actually doesn't do anything. These are the axes, they're labeled, they're very important. But the top and the right border actually don't contribute anything to the graph so we can bring up the set border command and the way this works is actually quite cool. If we have a look at this table you can see there's uh, these bits, there's the plot command and let's ignore the s plot command for now. So we have the plot command and we have these bits that correspond to the borders and we just add them together. For instance if I want to have the bottom and the left border I just add 1 to 2 so I type set border 3. If I want to print the top border 2, I can just go 1 plus 2 plus 4 is 7, so I set border 7. For our purposes, set border 3 should be good. So we now only get the left and the bottom border. What we still get are those little ticks here, because these are just the mirrored versions of the x ticks down here and the y ticks on the left. But if we type set ticks no mirror, we get rid of them. So that's a little better. I want to talk about these ticks a little more and the actual the labels. But first let me quickly set the x range of my graph to minus 0.513 and then set the x ticks to for example 0, 0, 0.5,13. And what that does is it starts the x ticks at 0 then adds ticks at increments of 0.5 until 13. So we replot. As you can see, the x axis is now labeled from 0 to 13 in increments of 0.5. What you can also do is you can add custom labels to certain ticks. For instance, set x ticks, round brackets. And a label can of course be a number, so we can use the label 0 for the number 0. But we could also use the label label for the number 5, for example. Close the bracket. And if we replot, we see that the point 0 is now labeled by 0, which makes sense. And the point 5 is now labeled with label, which doesn't actually make a lot of sense. You can't even tell that it's 5 anymore. But it can make sense to label your ticks differently. And what we have here is actually an example of a sine wave. So it would actually be quite nice to label the x-axis in multiples of pi instead of just increments of 1 or 0.5. This is also a good point to talk about variables. Uh, real quick, you can introduce variables in GNUblot. You can, for instance, just go a equals 2. And now a is 2. And you can plot sine of a times x and we'll just plot the sine of 2x. And if you forget your variables you can show variables a and it shows all variables beginning with a which in our case is just a equals 2. Just for fun we could type in show variables pi and the value of pi pops up because pi is a variable that's already implemented. It's already saved in GNUblot and we can use this for our convenience which is actually quite handy because now I can go set x ticks, sorry, and let's just label the point 0 with 0, 
But now let's label the point pi. And what we do is we have these curly brackets, a slash symbol p, close the bracket. What this does, it introduces the Greek letter corresponding to lowercase p. So this is just a lowercase pi in our case. It works for different letters, a gives alpha and so on. And we want to label the point pi. And then we can go to symbol p and have two times pi. And I'll just continue that up to four pi real quick. And if we replot that, we see that our x-axis is now labeled with 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi, which is very convenient for these kinds of plots. I might want to bring up the size of these ticks a little. They're kind of small. I can just set ticks scale 1.5. If you only want to scale the x ticks, you can go set x ticks scale or set y ticks scale. And as you can see, they're now a little longer. And the border is still a little thin, in my opinion. So we might want to set border line with two. And it gives a little thicker border. What you see here is that these ticks now intersect the legend box, which is not very pretty. So we might want to move the box around. All we did was we set it to the bottom left, which is some, some broad alignment. But we can actually do better. We can specify in this coordinate grid exactly where the box needs to go. What you specify is the bottom left corner of the box and you can give coordinates for it. So if we bring that up to minus 0.1 about here and minus 0.8 maybe here should be good. So I go set key at minus 0.1 minus 1.8 and I move the key over there. It looks much better now. Now what's still a little small is the labels of the ticks. So as we did before, we can use this font command. So this time it's set ticks font and bring this up to 14 as well. So it's a little bigger now. And as you should always do, we want to label our axes. So set ax label. Let's use T over S again. And let's make it size 16. Set Y label, uh, yeah, show water level in meters again, font, bring this up to 16 as well. So you see the labels for the axes are now there. They're quite large as I wanted it. What you see here is that we went kind of lucky. This minus sign from the minus 0.5 almost touched uh, one of these words. It's kind of lucky that the, it's between the words. But it can happen that these labels can touch the numbers from your axis and it's not really pretty. So what you can do is you can introduce an offset so set while label offset minus one, for instance. And it puts it a little to the left. So there's no danger of intersection here anymore. Now, if you play around with these settings a little, you can make graphs that are actually quite good looking. But there's just one more thing I want to say, and that's about the P and G terminal. So for this graph, the P and G terminal doesn't even work anymore because there's this pi symbol. And at least in my setup, the P and G terminal doesn't work with the pi symbol. But we can use the terminal P and G Cairo, which is just an improved version of the P and G terminal, and it can deal with the pi. So you might want to output this as a PNG image, so set output test PNG and replot it. And this looks about as you might expect. You can see now that the label of the Y axis is a little far away from the Y axis. So this offset might not have been necessary. But apart from that, it kind of looks like you expect. Maybe increasing the, the width of the box of the legend was unnecessary too. It looks rather wide, so we might introduce a smaller width there, but it's looking quite nice. And if you followed my tutorial last week, you might have tried out different uh, image file sizes. 
you might have gone set term png or let's use png chiro now and use the size command for instance double the size you can do that set output test2.png replot that and if you open that file up you see that it actually looks completely different and the reason for that is that all the size specifications that we gave like the font size like the line width like the point size was all with respect to pixels now an image file has doubled the number of pixels in each dimension so the file the canvas is actually larger but the size of the font and everything else with respect to the pixels is still the same so it's going to look as if it shrank by a factor one half this is something to keep in mind if you want to output higher resolution images what you could do is with your wxt terminal which is used to preview all your plots this default terminal you can also specify a size and we can go to 80 960 there so you kind of get the preview window roughly the same size as your PNG. So that's the thing to keep in mind if you're going to use the PNG output. There are also different ways to output your image in scalable vector graphics terminal or in PDF terminal. So you can look that up if you want to. For me, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.